All right, thank you, Jen, for your introduction. Thanks, everybody, for your interest in our project. And uh, although it's great that we can do all this remotely, also part of me wishes you could be here because I'm in a really nice place, a coastal town. It's a, a really cozy cove with the best tidal pools you can find. And it's the peak of summer. Everybody's having fun here with their families. It's really, really nice here. But we're going to be talking about disasters, right? Uh, so I work at CGDN as a consortium of six universities, uh, a public funded research institute. And we've partnered for this project, as I'll be telling you a little bit more later, with INRIA as a, a French research center focused on math and computer science. And they have a, an office here in Chile, which also has uh, public support for funding. So we've joined our forces to build this platform called uh, Infocrisis Social, which in English it would be the other way around. It would be social crisis information, right? So that makes a little bit more sense. Uh, as Jen was mentioning, Chile is a country that's marked by disaster. We're like the world uh, summit of disasters. We have this timeline that my office has built up. Um, uh, in 1960, we had the strongest earthquake recorded in, in history. And we have multi types of, of risk, not only earthquakes, but we also have drought. We have lots of active volcanoes and we have snowstorms, um, floods and, and many wildfires, big fires. In 2010, we had the, one of the a massive earthquake in Maule. The rupture from the earth was 350 kilometers long and it lasted for over four minutes with a strength of over eight megawatts. That, picture that, it's like sh shaking so strong you can't stand on your feet and it won't stop for four minutes. It was so intense that it was felt even through Brazil to in Sao Paulo. And after that came a huge tsunami that washed away a few coastal towns. Even in what we have been up to uh, for this year, we've already had a couple of, of important disasters just ending last year on, on you know, Christmas Day it was a huge return, but we have good infrastructure for this. And, and fortunately, it's happened in a place of the country that, although it's very rural and vulnerable, everything's built in wood. So the houses had a lot of strength to resist this. Um, but then by the turn of the new year, uh, a huge forest fire started coming into a city, Valparaiso, and between 100, 200 houses were lost in that. And then just a couple of weeks after that, we started another uh, huge kind of a cluster of forest fires starting in central South Chile, and it just wouldn't stop, and it kept on catching on. We had a huge uh, heat wave and extended drought through over many years, so the fires weren't stopping. Um, we had help from, from many parts of the world, like every country sent their hugest um, fire-fighting airplanes, that, and that picture there's a 747. The major capital was covered in, in smoke from fires that were happening miles away from that. It was only, in the end, it was only uh, washed, um, dosed by some unusual rain. So we're looking for that. So basically, we're, we're just used to, to living with disasters and many kind, and our country has always had to start rebuilding itself from the ground up. So what we want to use is technology to help people be informed in these situations, right? Um, Another interesting thing about our country is that we're very, very well connected. Um, technology adoption are it's very quick and very intense. People are very good at chatting on, on um, social media. We're like uh, very dense connections and, and long uh, relationships get covered through, through multiple media. Um, we have like a third rate of penetration for social media in the world. And of course, when disasters come, people go to social media to talk about them, right? Well, we even laugh about that. The, the tweet that you see here at the corner, they were playing, you know, with these hashtags that they built to, to just have a, a game rolling. And they're talking about how before the internet, you couldn't report when it was, when you had an earthquake, where everybody's now here so used to saying, oh, it's, it's quaking. Um, it's really, uh, we just make fun of it. We, see, we also see here, Forest fires are the first trending topic, right? It's it's, it's something that is, is happening these days and at, at least last, until last week, uh, we were very concerned about that. People sent all kinds of information here, like some maps of affected areas and, and some 
firsthand testimonies of guys saying like, we were putting away six fires today and unfortunately they were all intentional. Uh, so very active country in terms of social media. So one way I use is take this participation, we have this opportunity to get a lot of information, very rich information going on about the situation, but there's no central point that can gather this information to help people make sense what in the sector management is called situational awareness in being really aware of how far it is, how big it is, etc. So that brings us to our purpose, right? Our project is focused on providing citizens, uh, reporters and researchers, real-time information um, related to these natural disasters and, and crisis. We want to be a hub to centralize different sources of information. Uh, like the project, this started out as a sin. And uh, well, the first thing we, one of the first steps we did in terms of our research was to talk to our people in our in our lab, right? We have these these uh, world rate experts in disaster from many areas. We spoke with our some of our researchers, our students. I did a, a quick poll on what are the most important types of information you would need for different types of disaster, and depending on who you are. Um, here we focused some of the priority uh, of what information we should provide on this dashboard. Um, with that, we did a first round of our conceptual model. We were scraping some official websites to get information. We do some, some little stuff with Twitter, different ways of manipulating the tweets and forming different uh, feeds from that. From that, we can also create analytics and some charts. Um, and we also integrate the green circles at the bottom, different maps that we have, um, and as well as other types of, of information. So the idea is that all that information is gathered on this dashboard and the users can rate the resources and they can suggest uh, additional resources as well. So we want to make this some very participative uh, system. It's like we want to build a community around this uh, disaster topic because we know there's a, the Latin community in, in Twitter, there's a lot of people who are focused on informing disasters. So we want to make this participation something a little bit more uh, structured, um, but, but still give it enough freedom, right? Um, another interesting thing about this project is that we, we have been recognizing that depending on the stage of disaster, um, there's different information becomes different priority, right? So or well, you're during a very threatening situation, uh, there's an evacuation in place, you just need to see evacuation maps. And if there's no disaster in place, our priority will be to uh, put up uh, educational information so people will be prepared and how can they uh, be connected with their families, how can they have like uh, emergency kits and backup batteries for their phones and etc. Uh, we have some initial wireframes we did for, for this project and uh, here we start kind of mapping out how we want to integrate maps with official alerts and different news sources, videos, and we want to do some, some kind of uh, incentivization for participation mm -hmm. for people to, while well, they're talking about Twitter, in Twitter we're going to kind of put up with the most relevant uh, hashtags and user accounts. We need to figure out how to avoid people gaming the systems, you know, what we always do. And then we started this partnership with INRIA and we have a, a couple of, of pictures from our meetings and we've done, since then we've been doing a lot of brainstorming. We came up with a name and the logo for the project uh, among some, uh, some other stuff. Uh, we did this kind of development oriented uh, conceptual model where we show that uh, users see different types of information or dynamic reports or collected uh, prioritized collections of information, different types of information, how different types of disaster have um, different sources and a different state of information of the disaster will show us different priorities. And then we also prepared a poster for a conference where we did a public facing uh, uh, I to explain the idea of the project very simply. We have information from official sources, from the press, and then from all sorts of people on, on social media where we can create maps, we can capture tweets, Facebook videos, and, and pictures. So the idea of what we see here at the bottom is that the users who are seeing these resources, they can uh, help evaluate them, and at the same time, they can also share them. So we want to kind of promote people to uh, 
be active on this, but with, with not a, a very high bar for participation, we want to make them it very easy for them to participate. And this feedback will help us train the, the system uh, to kind of a combination of artificial intelligence and, and user curation. We've also been doing some content modeling for, for a project that was kind of very tricky to figure out what an alert means and different uh, institutions have different levels for the alert. Uh, we're basically kind of shaping information around the, the stage of the event, type of event. And we have a very important factor in terms of location. Uh, geolocation of information will be a very critical part of, of this project. Um, with all this, we've been working some content inventory to determine information sources, different uh, institutions, or official institutions, and geos, media, and of course, we have a very important part of digital volunteers, this active members of the community who are already focused on the topic of this after, and they want to make them part of our, our allies uh, to be a central part of this community. And we collect information from different kind of, of channels that we have here on there. All right. Uh, another interesting uh, discovery part of on our research that we've been doing some design workshops with different groups of, of people. We had a uh, disaster expert, we have computer experts, and then we did some with some uh, social media, these digital volunteers. These design workshops where people uh, just discuss uh, what important types of information will they need in different contexts, and then hash out how they would uh, see them on a screen. And we did this uh, focused on a few scenarios. Um, first session, we have two groups, and then we, we join them all together, which has led to more sketching. And we're, we're, we're working on these interfaces. Uh, another part of a project is that we want to kind of avoid the problem that we have, we're seeing from some of the sources that have great information that people need during a disaster, they don't know how to show it in the most clear possible way. Uh, some some very institutionalized uh, kind of military organizations, they really don't know much about information design, so we want to turn a pass on that. And this is just the first sketch. Uh, it should be even clearer. Um, currently, we have a, an initial release um, based on our, our development tight line on um, Agile, and we're showing we have our initial development work has focused on capturing Twitter information. And here we're showing that according to different type of disaster and information the, the, based on type of source. So we have official sources, press, NGOs, digital volunteers, and then general community. And as you can see here in the last couple of days, there, there has been a lot of activity, including a fire, quake, tsunami, and, and, and flooding. Um, so how is this project sustainable? Well, at the very core, our, our main goal is to build a, a resilient community, right? So if people are more, uh, have less vulnerability, there's less damage from natural hazards. Uh, disasters will not have as much damage to, to infrastructure and there's less rebuilding, et cetera, right? Um, and another level, a resilient community is aware of their natural resources and they know what to protect and how to avoid the, the risks so they will be able to live in, uh, in better connection with their environment. This makes them less vulnerable to natural hazards and to disasters, right? Um, and then there's a technical part of what we're just building a central repository that will have less traffic and we're um, improving information delivery and uh, reusing software, keeping our code clean. We're very, uh, pretty focused on that as well. In terms of resources, what we need on this this project, there are some starting resources. And, there, and then um, we've also been working a lot with volunteers. And that's one of the things that um, we want to bring to you. So if everybody, anybody's interested in joining our project, um, We'll be happy to speak with you. We are very um, interested in getting people's input. So thank you for your interest, and I hope you can keep in touch. I'm not sure we'll have time for